you're going to want to stay tuned for my full guide on how to install Quinnaps X on your Steam Deck and optimize it and configure it. It's all good and set to go for 2023. You're not going to want to miss it. Calling all retro gamers. Welcome to the channel, fellow deckers and retro gamers. I am RetroKill-9 and this is Calling All Retro Gamers. So if you're here, you're probably wanting to know how do you install Coinops X on your Steam Deck and you're probably interested in some tweaks and some optimizations. Full disclaimer, uh, as you know how things of the internet work, I cannot tell you on where to download these files. These files have ROMs included. Don't bother to ask. What you're going to want to do is use Google and you'll be able to figure it out. All right, with that out of the way, we're going to go ahead and get into this. I'm going to talk about how to install it, uh, some tweaks. Uh, we're going to go ahead and remove uh, the CRT uh, shadering and scan lines. If that's your sort of thing, that's fine for me. I really don't like that. And we're going to talk about using the left trackball uh, on your Steam Deck so you can do things like play Operation Wolf and Centipede. Yeah, that's the mouse. And then your right button will be used to go ahead and like load and save states. And you can use one of the triggers to pause it. All right, so we know we're all here. Let's get into it. We're booted up here into desktop mode. This is my 32 gig NTFS drive. And what I had to do was format a USB key and make it NTFS, which the deck can read. I don't think it can write to it. I found this to be easier to go ahead and then copy it over to my micro SSD instead of going ahead and using SSH or some other method to transfer it. So I have the 64 gig model, so I went ahead and just copied it over here and I extracted it and it's super easy to extract. I'm not actually going to go ahead and do it because I've already done it, but you just do extract and extract to your subfolder. It'll take a little bit of time and then boom, you'll have this CoinOps X3 Legend deck folder. And then to install it, all we have to do is just run install.sh and it's gonna ask if you wanna do it. Click execute, let it do its thing, and it'll take a few minutes. And I went ahead and uninstalled this and reinstalled it since I already had it installed. All right. And then you can see that it's done. Okay, so now that that's done, what we have to do is right click on the coinops.sh and then we have to go ahead and you want to click and you're going to want to add it to Steam. I've already done that. So I believe it's already there. Let's go ahead and take a look. Now we want to go ahead and run Steam. So now if we go to our library, and if I didn't mention, I do have a keyboard and mouse plugged in uh, through a dock. It makes it so much easier. You don't have to do this, uh, but trust me. Okay. And you'll find this. Uh, keep in mind that the name, it's not going to be named. Uh, CoinOps Legend 3X. It's going to appear here, but it's going to be named CoinOps.sh. But if you do a search for coin, it'll come up. Again, I've already gone ahead and added this, and um, that's why it shows up here. Then once you go ahead and do that, go ahead and go to Properties. You're going to want to name this whatever you want. I went ahead and named it CoinOps Legend 3, and then just leave everything else. The next thing that you're going to have to go ahead and do is you're going to have to go ahead and change the backgrounds you can see that I have set here and pretty much if you just go ahead and right click and you can do clear custom background I'm gonna do that just to show you now I'm going to do right click set custom background and then what you're gonna to want to do here is you're going to browse to wherever you have it I have mine everything is on the micro SSD and the coin legend folder wherever it is will be artwork and then for here you're gonna to want to pick the hero background and the boom it's set and then you're going to want to do the same thing. You're going to want to right click and you're going to want to set the custom logo. I'm not, I'm not going to do that, but you go through the same process, browse to the same folder. And then there's one other spot that you're going to want to go ahead and do is it's going to be in your library. You're going to want to go ahead and change uh, that icon here. So what I'm going to have to go ahead and do is let me go back home. So I had to kind of fumble around because what you need to do is it just it needs to show up. It needs to go ahead and show up here. And you can see there's some other games. Let's see if I right click. Manage. Ah, clear custom artwork, yes. So you want to go ahead and add it here. So that way it'll appear in all three spots. 
and then you're good to go. Now there's a few other tweaks that you can go ahead and do here that I'd like to go ahead and talk about. And that is, I personally, uh, there's really no wrong or right answer, but when I started this, I really didn't like the scan lines that were set on this. You know, I, I, didn't, I didn't like all the filters. Um, if you like that sort of thing, you can leave it, but you, unfortunately you can't actually change these settings in, um, you know, once you go into MAME, uh, you might be able to, but I haven't figured out. So what you want to do is go into emulators, go into the MAME folder, and then here we got to find our MAME.ini file. Here we go. So go ahead and open that up. And then you're going to want to scroll down to around like the 300s or so. And there's a few lines that we're going to have to go ahead and edit here. So keep scrolling down, keep scrolling down, keep scrolling down. And this still, so I've already gone ahead and changed these settings since uh, this file, you know, is, is still here. And that's the important thing, wherever you copy this directory over to, whether it's on the internal SSD or the external micro SSD or some other drive, just make sure that you copy it to wherever you need to before running that install script. And what you're going to want to do is, I believe the pre, I forget, I think both of these are set to one, but you're going to want to set uh, this filter to three, I'm sorry, this filter to zero. This prescale filter to three, and this filter to zero, just as it's shown. And then these three, you wanna go ahead and comment them out. You know, go ahead and add a pound symbol in front of it. And then once you do that, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and save, and then you're good to go. Let's get out of this, let's go back into gaming mode. And I'll take you just a second. And then there's some changes we need to make because otherwise, by default, you can't use the left and right trackpads. And there's some really cool changes and things that you can do. You can make it so that the left trackpad will act as a mouse. So if you're playing Operation Wolf or Centipede, you can go ahead and move it. And then the right one, you can go ahead and use that to do save states and all those kind of things. And for me, it also made the left trigger uh, to be able to pause. So let me show you. Let me go ahead and uh, do these settings here now that we're back up. And we want to go to controls, and now you can see because everything is set, you know, it looks like a real, a real background. We go to the community layouts, and then you're not okay. You don't want this one. I don't like this. This one will turn the left trackpad into the menu, but you can't actually use it. <laughs> and this one does the same thing. So you actually want this third one, the gamepad. Gamepad with mouse trackpad, and it'll act exactly as you want. And that's the one that I have that I have set here. And so now what I'm going to go ahead and do next is we're actually going to go and launch into the program. We're going to take a look at the layout, and I will show you what I mean by how you can use that left and right trackpad. You can see I've plugged in this aftermarket Xbox controller just to make things a little bit easier since I have it in, do in docked mode and all that. And what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to boot it up and greeted by this uh, screen. And then we're going to take a look at everything. And just again, I just want to give you a quick tour just how you can, you know, look at everything and uh, navigate around here. So by default, here's all your games. So if I press left and right, then that'll, okay, left and right will just move me normally. If you press the L and R triggers, now you can go ahead and you can, you can jump down, which is neat. So you can skip that way. And then if you press up and down, you can go to different categories. Uh, the settings, there's not much here. I have no idea what this day and night thing is, but here you have different themes, which is pretty neat. Uh, I really do like the default, but yeah, you can go to marquee, you can go to spin. So here pretty much you can go in and you can, you can change your themes. And then if we go up again, now you can go to your categories, which is great. Now we got our puzzlers, same thing. You can go ahead and you can speed through here. Sports. Racer, shoot 'em ups. Oh, I love that. Fight Club. I think those are just like fighting games, like Shoot Fighter. Running Gun, beat 'em ups. Old School. Your last played, and of course your favorites. Now you do have some consoles, so you've got like your Nintendo and Super Nintendo games. I've mainly noticed like Aladdin. There's your Aladdin's Batman Returns, Castlevania Bloodlines. You know all that, all that good stuff. And for the most part, you know, these play. You know. They play really, really well. Uh, I haven't, I haven't any issues. You know the variety of games that I've gone ahead and played. And so if we go in here, 
I'll go ahead and pick something like 1943 just to, you know, just to kind of show you. So for the Steam Deck, uh, you know, the button on the left pops in the pops in the credits. Which, actually, using an Xbox controller. Ah, gonna press the equivalent. And then on the right, there we go. That go. That's the that's the start button, and also the console games too. The triple dot button on the right. It's also start. And then notice, I didn't like, out of the box. I didn't have to really do anything. The buttons, they're you know they're they're mapped a little bit different per game, but you you know you can see here, everything is just everything is working fine. And if I want to get out of a game, then I gotta press both those buttons at the same time. And if you, I'll go ahead and I'll show you here on the screen. Now, if you take a look, you can see I'm pressing both those buttons at the same time on the Steam Deck. That's what you want to do to quit out of it. And then if you want to quit out of it altogether, you press that left button again. You know, that'll that'll make you completely quit out. And now I'm going to go ahead and go back in. And I'm going to show you with the, with the changes and the settings that we went ahead and made. Now, you'll see how it will, Operation Wolf will be able to, we'll be able to go ahead and play that. So if I want to get there real quick, again, just to show you. Just go here. And this is much easier, actually, with the Steam Deck controller than this Xbox controller I'm using. Um, okay, here we go. Pressing a 1. Go to O. And it looks like Operation Thunderbolt, which is the sequel, start. And then the only other thing I did want to point out here before I show you uh, with the buttons. Yeah, see, the, look, there's no scan lines, which again, if you like scan lines, that's fine. But yeah, I'm using the analog stick. And look, this thing is just flying all over the place. I really don't like that. Uh, well, this isn't perfect, but it is, you know, it is better than just using a regular, regular joystick. So yeah, let me go ahead and I'll show you some gameplay here by using my, uh, using my trackpad for playing Operation Wolf and, uh, and Centipede. Alrighty, so we're here in Zookeeper, and a few things that I did want to show you, and that is, okay, see how the game is paused? If I press, what is it, the lower uh, L2, that'll automatically pause the game. Very handy for arcade games. Alright, so now if we go ahead and press the right, um, you know, uh, touchpad, you can see here we have different sections, we can do a save state, uh, we can load a game. We can reset, we can quit. Um, we do have the main menu, although I wouldn't mess with there and do things, but you can also pause here if you like. Uh, see that it doesn't really work as well. I like to use L2. By setting those controls, it gives you save states and all those other good features as well here. So a few of the things I did want to point out that if you are wanting to optimize this for power, if you try to lower the watts for the processor, it's not gonna work. It'll just go ahead and make everything go slow if you go ahead and try to adjust the frame rate, it's, it's not gonna do anything. It's still gonna be 60 frames per second. Really the only optimization you can do is set down uh, the GPU. I put it down to 400 Hertz because so far all the arcade games and everything else that I tested didn't need above that. And if you have the Power Tools uh, Decky Loader plugin installed, you can set that for two cores. That helps, that, that helps, that helps a little bit. And depending on the game, it'll use anywhere from seven watts to 12 watts. So depending, you know, you can maybe get around from four to five hours or so battery life maybe six hours in some cases so yeah that's how you go ahead and get coin up set up uh, you may notice behind me now that i do have a uh, jsox docking station and that's because the iovolar one that i have uh, crapped out on me and i didn't want to mess with things i returned it from amazon because to make a long story short <laughs> it was very frustrating i wasn't able to get hdmi uh, with it, did all sorts of troubleshooting steps, my Evercades behind me worked, and I decided to send it back. This one works much better, it's instantaneous now when I plug it in with the IOVolar dock. It did take it a few seconds for it to show up and it wasn't consistent. This thing has been dead on, and I'll let you know if that changes. Plus, I was able to get a, a pretty good deal on it through Amazon and get another adapter, uh, which is also on the way. So, if you did find this channel through the YouTube-verse and you did like this type of content, 
please go ahead and like, subscribe. You're not going to want to miss out on the cool videos like this, on seeing the neat tweaks and hacks and things that I figure out with the Steam Deck and the optimizations that I do with games and various things. And if we could go ahead and get a conversation going below, let me know. Have you tried CoinOp X? Are you going to try CoinOp X on the, on the deck? You know, what do you, you know, you know, what do you think about it? Or is emulation not your scene? I know in the past I've talked about that I didn't want to get involved in setting and configuring emulation. However, the biggest difference versus using CoinOps X versus EmuDeck, it comes with all, all the ROMs, it comes with all the artwork. It is already done for you and it looks great. Uh, me personally, I didn't want to tinker or mess with any of that. You can see there's a little bit of tinkering that you just have to do and then you're done and you can start enjoying your games. And I did test uh, by playing a few arcade games that will save your high scores, which is just freaking fantastic. Also, too, while you're here, go ahead and check out some of these other videos. Me and Retro Rich, we do a podcast once every two weeks on indie, retro, modern, whatever, video game related. You're not going to want to miss it. We have special guests. Our last guest was, uh, was Tim from Tim's Arcade, Tim's Tiny Arcade. He was a great guy. You know, if, if you're interested in that type of things, go ahead and sub. Rich is also doing some videos with, uh, with Quinop X on his Legends Arcade, so be sure to stay tuned. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.